Celebrating 30 years of phenomenal trend forecasting, five times a week, Monday through Friday. Here's Gerald Salenti with today's trends in the news. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Wednesday, April 26, 2017. And here are some of today's trends in the news. Over there in Asia, whew, markets up, Nikkei up again nicely. Over there in Europe, yeah, the markets are up, but not much. Here in the States, the markets are up all day, but near the end, they went down. Not a lot, but some. And oil, oil down a bit, and gold popped up just a little more. So what happened? Well, today was the big day. Everyone was waiting for the Trump tax cuts, the biggest in history. So stocks fall, fail to hold gains, close mostly lower after White House releases tax plan. So... There's still some ifs, ands, or buts about them, so we really don't know a lot of detail so far. But looks like it'll help the big corporations the most, and that's the best. Yeah, this way they could get more money to buy back stocks and keep the equity markets going up, because that's what they're doing with it. Rather than investing it, they're holding on to all this dough and keeping those markets high. And, of course, we'll see how it helps we, the little people, probably. Who knows? We'll check it out more in detail and talk about it tomorrow. The White House added there will be a one-time tax on trillions of dollars held by corporations overseas. But they haven't given that tax rate yet, but that's a good one to bring that money back, and that will help, of course, boost the economy. Top White House officials outlined President Trump's tax plan, a proposal they said would be the biggest tax cut in U.S. history. It slashes its corporate tax rate to 15 percent from 35 percent. And again, I'm in favor of the billionaires paying 90 percent. They got the money to do it. Why not give it back to society? But they'll lower that tax, that top tax rate, so the Trumps of the world could trump up higher. And what else are they saying on Wall Street? Well, here's a quote from John Conlin, an investment officer at People's United Wealth Management. Quote, the discussion around the tax plan is a positive for the markets, but I don't think the market is excited. I think it will take some pressure off the market, but there are still questions about some of the details. Ah, pressure off the market? Hey, you know what today is? Wednesday. Trend alert. Trend alert. World strife. What's next? Are you ready? We are. That's right. We broke it down where the markets are going, what we expect, what we see, and how it's going to unfold. A trend alert of history before it happens like you won't get anywhere else. And, of course, the corporate earnings season. It's looking good. It's positive. But remember, these are earnings from back then, not now. So moving forward, what will earnings look like? They're looking a lot better than they did the year before. So there are positives out there. And what else do we have in the market sector? Oil. Oil prices rebounded from early losses on Wednesday after data showed a larger than expected fall off in crude U.S. inventories. However, gasoline and distillate stockpiles grew while U.S. production and imports increased, so the path for higher prices remains tentative, analysts said. He also said there's lackluster gasoline demand that could leave Stockpiles of the fuel elevated even through the summer driving season. In January, sales of gasoline by refiners was down 6% from a year earlier. And gold moved up, not a lot, but a bit. Not a lot of news to why it pushed up. But it's holding well above the 1250 mark, and that's important. Should it continue to hold it well against it? Now it's in the 1270 range. And it holds above that 1250 range. It could go over 1300. But again, as we keep saying, gold has to really solidify over $1,400 an ounce 
to hit the new high. A lot of the economic news also is in the Trump protectionist plan, as they call it, from other countries, but in the United States, it's bringing jobs back home by renegotiating these lousy trade deals. And yesterday, I talked about what they're doing in Canada, putting an import tariff on imported lumber coming in. So now, Donald Trump has threatened to broaden the tax dispute with China. He said on Twitter, what is this Twitter, you know, tweet, tweet, tweetily deep, you know, what is this Twitter stuff? Anyway, that Canada has made business for our dairy farmers in Wisconsin and other border states very difficult. So now he's talking about putting a tariff on incoming dairy products. Asked on CNBC whether the U.S. move was the start of a trade war, Christia Freeland, Canada's Minister of Foreign Affairs, replied, no, absolutely not. Okay, we'll see. Some interesting data on that lumber. U.S. remains the top destination for Canadian lumber exports by a big margin, capturing over 77% of the sales abroad. But lumber sales to China have surged in a decade from 65.9 million Canadian dollars in 2006 to over a billion a year last year. China now buys 13% of all Canadian exports, as opposed to 0.6% a decade ago. You know what the top trend is for 2017. Buy and sell China. They're buying what you're selling, and they're selling what you're buying. And again, more trade actions on the table. Wilbur Ross, the Commerce Secretary, is talking about launching trade actions to protect the U.S. aluminum, steel, vehicles, aircraft, shipbuilding, and semiconductors. I'm talking about renegotiating NAFTA. So this is real. It's happening. To me, these are positives. I don't see them as negatives. If we pay more and we're earning more, that's good. If we pay less and earn a lot less, that's not good. So I'm for the making more dough and paying more for what you get. Uh, Uber plans to prove cars can fly. Well, if you go to the airport and you see the way people behave and the way they're dressed, pigs can fly, so why not cars? Yeah, I think this stuff is off. And Waymo to expand self-driving effort. And I think that's way off too. But I could be wrong. Waymo LLC, the automotive autonomous car unit of Google parent Alphabet Inc. will expand its testing efforts by making hundreds of self-driving vehicles available to families and urban commuters in the Phoenix area. When these things break down, it's going to cost a fortune to fix. Forget about going to your car dealer to get them done, man. Hey, maybe that's going to be a good educational opportunity that colleges that are putting out these degrees in worthlessness are generating to start teaching more about auto repairs in the new age of self-driving, automated cars that you can have. I want no part of them. I drive an old car, and I love it. And I never say the word never, or people say never say never. I say I will never buy one of these new techno-filled automobiles. Remember yesterday I talked about the median income in America. It's around $35,000 a year. And I said, what a lot of baloney that is. Can't live on that. Median income, raise a family. Feds, $100,000 is low income in parts of the Bay Area. That's right. 
They say a family of four in San Francisco or San Mateo County with an income of $105,350 is now considered low income. For Alameda and Contra Costa County, $80,000 is considered low income. Seattle, $72,000 low income. And Boston, $78,000 low income. Ah, Google tries to curtail sites selling fake news. I guess they'll be keeping ABC, NBC, the White House, Fox, NPR, and all the rest of them, huh? Because they're the ones putting out fake news all the time. The Russians are coming. The Russians are coming. Oh, they went into Hillary Clinton, then the Democratic National Committee. No proof. Oh, yeah. Assad used Syrian... Uh, uh, sarin gas, no proof. Here it is, right in today's Financial Times. Russians accused of front-runner hack. Russian hackers accused of seeking to manipulate the U.S. elections are targeting Emmanuel Macron, the Obama of France, the front-runner in the French presidential race, according to Cyber security experts. You want to call fake news, fake news? It never stops. No proof according to. And again, remember when that cyber group, those experts retracted their statement about Russian hacking into the DNC. It was reported, and we reported it on Voice of America, but it never made the oppressitude news. And what else? Ah, hey, we got to stop those Iranians from launching missiles and those North Koreans launching missiles. How dare they launch missiles that go a couple of feet compared to intercontinental ballistic missiles? U.S. launches Minuteman 3 ICBM to show nuclear capabilities amid North Korean tensions. Hey, that's okay, man. An unarmed intercontinental ballistic missile has been launched from a U.S. Air Force base in California to ensure its effectiveness, readiness, and accuracy and to demonstrate nuclear capabilities. Yay! (laughs) Nuclear capabilities! Let's destroy the world! What kind of morons are they? I'll tell you who they are. They're your president, they're your congressmen, they're your senators, they're your mayors, they're your councilmen. They're all the freaks running the shows, man, and are here and around the world. And speaking of which, according to the uh, Wall Street Journal story today, Erdogan's win was marked by problems. Monitors report unverified ballots, observers kept from polling places in Turkey. They had the constitutional referendum over there, giving Erdogan more powers. I say the Russians were responsible for that. That's who did it. Yeah, they marked the problems. Why not? Hey, anybody can make up anything. I say we should bomb Turkey. Oh, maybe I shouldn't say that. Maybe the president should say that. Hey, it was an illegal election. Make up anything that you want. Kill anybody that you want because Turks are doing it. Turk strike kills U.S. backed fighters. Turkish jets launched dozens of airstrikes targeting U.S. backed fighters in Syria. Oh, what do U.S. backed fighters do? What are we backing fighters in Syria for? What, What business do we have doing over there? And what's Turkey doing in a, he's a sovereign nation. That's okay. It's all lost. Sovereignty doesn't count. Kill whoever you want, anywhere you want. And we're going to show you we've got nuclear weapons. Quote, we are very concerned, deeply concerned, that Turkey conducted airstrikes earlier today in northern Syria as well as northern Iraq without proper coordination either with the United States or the broader global coalition to defeat ISIS. And we've expressed those concerns to the government of Turkey directly, State Department spokesman Mark Toner said. What are you doing over there? Concerns. 
You're beating nobody. And it's not only in Turkey. It's everywhere. Here we are, like 16 years in Afghanistan. And look at the progress. U.S. warns of another tough year in Afghanistan. Yep. No kidding. Blow me away. Never would have figured that out. Taliban infiltrates Afghan base, killing over 140. Wow, what a surprise. Taliban car bomb attacks U.S. base in Afghanistan. And two more. Taliban attacks on base brings new uncertainty to war. New uncertainty? How can you write something so grossly moronic? Uncertainty? Hey, didn't Obama, the Nobel Peace of Crap Prize winner, send 33,000 of our troops over there to straighten things out after he, won, after he became president? Uncertainty? The longest war in American history? But you know who's to blame? The Russians. U.S. says Russians are arming the Taliban. U.S. military official said they have seen an increasing number of small arms provided by the Russian government. U.S. official have complained that the Kremlin has interfered on the Afghan battlefield on the Taliban's side. How dare they? Hey, wasn't Jimmy Carter to put the Taliban in there to get rid of the Russians? And now the Russians are helping the Taliban and working against the Afghan government, the puppet government installed by the Americans? What are we doing over there? Read your trends journals from going back. I outlined George W. Bush's speech to the nation nine days after 9-11, making the case to attack, invade, and occupy Afghanistan. And I began it by saying only a madman would speak these words and only people dumbstruck with terror would believe them and believe they did. I outlined his entire speech to the nation, not one fact of why we should go into Afghanistan. Oh, Osama bin Laden was there. He'd been there, and maybe he'd been gone. So that's an excuse to invade and occupy a nation and destroy it for 16 years and be part of the migrant crisis problem or refugee crisis problem. <laughs> They're taking us to war. They love war. The madmen do. And the war drums are beating. Read your trend alert. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's some of today's trends in the news. <laughs>